There are some people who can do anything they want to. They read a ton of books, play a few instruments, have mastered whatever career they're in, and probably have a few side hustles. How is this possible? How can you be successful in several different pursuits while also having a large amount of time for relaxation and recovery? My name's Aman, I'm a student studying computer science and economics, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how some people can do everything by using the 80-20 principle. Timestamps are in the description, let's begin. The 80-20 principle was discovered by Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto in 1896. One day, Pareto noticed that 20% of the pea pods in his garden were responsible for producing 80% of the peas. Additionally, he also realized that around 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the population. Pareto named this principle the 80-20 principle after these two examples. However, it's usually abstracted out by calling it the principle of unequal distribution to show that it exists in a variety of proportions. The 80-20 principle states that in several systems, a small minority of the constituents produce a large majority of the outputs. If you look closely, you'll see this unequal distribution almost everywhere in your daily life. You only wear a small minority of your clothes a majority of the time. In a book, 20% of the pages contain 80% of the most relevant information. Within a business, a few large customers produce the majority of the revenue. Within the S&P 500, just five large tech companies control almost 25% of the entire index fund. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Facebook are projected to control 30, if not 40% of the market within the next few years. A few weeks ago, after after looking through my YouTube analytics, I realized that the 80-20 principle permeates this as well. A majority of my total views were coming from a small subset of my videos. This means that, to be successful on the platform, all you have to do is figure out which videos have the potential to go viral and perfect those. This technique is called manufactured virality, and it's a method that a lot of YouTubers use to blow up on the platform. The inverse of the Pareto principle is also true. A large majority of the inputs often create a small minority of the output. One example of this is your daily productivity. Most people have a short period of intense focus, which produces the majority of the results for that day. The rest of the time is normally spent doing menial work or procrastinating. Why does the 80-20 principle even exist? Well, the reason you can see it in so many different areas is because of the power of compounding. Think about it this way. If you were to improve just 1% every day for a year, where do you think you would be? You'd be 37 times better than you initially were. Additionally, if you were to decrease by 1% every day, you'd almost be at zero. In most systems, what begins as a small advantage compounds and becomes larger over time. This is how some YouTube videos on smaller channels end up going viral. Most viral videos aren't actually that much higher quality than the others. What happens is that these videos get slightly more attention than normal. Because the YouTube algorithm likes to promote videos that people enjoy, it starts showing it to more and more people. Pretty soon, that effect compounds and it blows up massively. This is how a few videos that are only a little better than the other ones end up doing extraordinarily well. If a business has a slight edge over their competitors in the beginning, this usually starts to expand as time goes on. Because most areas are winner take all, or at least winner take most, if you have a small lead in the beginning, over time as that compounds, you'll end up with a large majority of the rewards. Win once and it will be easier to win again and again. This is sometimes called the Matthew effect after this verse in the Bible. To everyone who has, more will be given, but from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So how do you actually use the 80-20 principle? The 80-20 principle can be used in any situation to reap most of the rewards by minimizing the number of inputs. For most people, this input is time. This principle helps you progress through any activity while minimizing the time it takes to do so. Here's what you should do. First, sit down and identify what activities you'd like to participate in. For me, I'd like to exercise, read more books, keep my grades up, continue putting out content, and get better at music. Then, take each of these areas and figure out what the 80-20 is. Let's talk about weightlifting. What's the 80-20 of building muscle? Well, if you go to the gym, then you know that there's a few exercises called heavy compound lifts that provide a majority of the gains. These include bench press, squat, deadlift, and pull-up. What separates these exercises is that you're moving a lot of weight while also using several muscles together. 
together. There are a ton of extra isolation exercises, but they don't really add that much. If you want to focus on building muscle while also minimizing the time at the gym, you want to master these four lifts. Heavy compounds are the 80-20 of lifting. Let's talk about guitar. When you learn to play it, there are four chords that, with the use of a couple, will allow you to play a ton of different songs. Obviously, no one's going to master guitar by only knowing four chords. But if you want to reap a majority of the rewards by minimizing the input, this is a great place to start. This is how some people can do everything. They identify several distinct areas and maximize the 80-20 of each of them. They're not becoming the best in any distinct field, but this allows them to become pretty good at a bunch of different skills. Finally, I want to talk about how Apple perfectly used the 80-20 principle to manipulate the outcome of a court case. A few months ago, Epic Games sued Apple, claiming that they were being anti-competitive by taking a 30% cut of every purchase on the app store. This large fee made it difficult for smaller app developers to maintain a profit while also meeting store requirements. Last week, to combat this, Apple released the App Store Small Business Program. Basically, if a business earns under $1 million a year, they only have to pay a 15% fee instead of 30%. This does help a majority of the businesses on the app store as 95% of them earn under $1 million. However, these smaller businesses only only bring in a minority of Apple's App Store revenue. Those large corporations who were untouched by this new policy make up a majority of Apple's App Store purchases. In other words, Apple kept their overall profits consistent while also pleasing most of their customers. This is a brilliant example of the 80-20 principle in action. Hopefully you can take Apple's example and adjust your systems by prioritizing the small minority of inputs that produce a majority of the results. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.